so enter at your own risk and for whatever reason you decided to continue watching. So if at any point along this video you end up feeling some type of way, you will only have yourself to blame. Welcome to another video. There's plenty of Haval H6 GT reviews on YouTube and I'm pretty sure you've already seen a couple of videos. And chances are you already know everything about the different H6 models. But you being you, you are watching another H6 review, hoping to hear something different. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, we have the H6 GT, normal H6 Super Lux, and H6 Hybrid. If you are not smart, car manufacturers will play mind games with you. So in this video, I'm not going to waste your time talking about USB ports and cup holders, because you already know about all those things. Here we're just gonna focus on which H6 offers the best value for your money. Well, in my opinion. And it is very important to note that my opinion is not the word of God. So it's up to you whether you take it or leave it. I like the Haval H6, but now the Chinese are showing us how to legally more a daylight robber. You simply create a problem and sell the solution. While everyone is still dizzy, you give them a sporty version of the car that everyone is complaining about to exacerbate the problem. No matter how much I may love a brand, once they change a few things nyana on an existing model, then charge more, they lose my respect. That's why the Lemon brand lost my respect when they gave us the 2022 Polo R line. That car is useless and it's crazy that it now starts from 445,000 rands before extras. No offense if you bought it, don't feel bad. Very most South Africans don't use common sense when buying a car. We buy based on emotions. You can't justify spending close to half a million rands on a 1-liter 3-cylinder hatchback. Like how do you feel when West Bank takes 8,500 every month from your salary? Then you pay 1,500 for insurance. That's 10,000 rands down the drain before you even factor in the cost of fuel. I said enter at your own risk and you continued watching. If you have any regrets, it's not too late to reconsider your decision and excuse us because there's no point in addressing people who are not prepared to hear the truth. We ought to have uncomfortable conversations because that thing of massaging people's emotions doesn't work. And don't get it twisted, I'm not bitter or jealous that you guys are driving airlines and I'm driving a Swift. I'm merely just trying to help. In front, the H6 GT looks really mean compared to the normal one. GT, not GT. Normal, not normal. You don't even have to be a Haval fan to appreciate the stunning design of this Ganda Ganda, but for me the red design is not that great. Some people will love it, but for me it's a no. If you love it, we're not gonna blame you though, cause people love different things. Some just want a pretty face, some want bumps, and many I want both in prints, but a sick collab. With the GT, you get 19 inch gloss black walls with some lime brake calipers. Some people say they are yellow, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna say they are lime to avoid complicating things. With the 9 GT H6 Super Lux, there's some chrome on the wheels, and if you don't like that, you can get a black spray paint can for as little as 40 rands. So the side profile is nice, front end design is super nice, but the back is borderline weird. Firstly, they removed the eye catching light bar and replaced it with a fake carbon fiber inset. Secondly, the back is just bulky and flat and it kind of makes the car look chopped. I can't really explain it, but after the second spoiler, there's a weirdly flat surface area and from this angle, the car looks like something you'd see in a video game. The rear design is not a deal breaker, at least for me. Due to the slanting coupe roof design, the GT lost a bit of boot space. The non GT H6 Super Lux has a boot space of about 600 liters and with the GT you only get 392 liters. That's what you get if you go for looks over practicality. But at least there's a spare wheel which you don't get in the H6 Hybrid. Inside, all the H6 models are more or less the same. The only difference is the sweat and lime trims you get in the GT. But you already know that because you are not seeing an H6 GT today for the first time. So I'll skip the story of legroom and cup holders and get to the uncomfortable conversation. Do I think the H6 GT is a great car? Yes, it is absolutely an amazing car, but I wouldn't buy it. Because for me, it has no key selling points besides looks and the underwhelming exhaust sound. With the H6 Hybrid, you pay more for the hybrid technology. And the key selling point is improved fuel efficiency when you compare it to the normal H6. Here you see where your extra money is going. With the GT, there's no compelling feature that can make me up for it over the normal H6 Super Lux. 
Even when it comes to performance, they merely just added an extra 5 kilowatts and 5 newton meters of torque so that we can shut up because they knew there's people like me who are going to say, yeah, even the performance is the same. But 5 kilowatts, really? Just buy a normal H6 Super Lux. You won't be missing out on anything. With the 40,000 rands change, you'll buy petrol. Buying the H6 GT for race mode is like drinking a non-alcoholic beer. It's pointless. I get all the H6 GT social media hype, but for me, this car is just nice to admire from a distance. Almost like having a crush on an Instagram Slay Queen. That crush should just remain a crush, because if you act on it, your pockets will suffer. The same applies to the Suzuki Swift Sport. It is just a great car to admire from a distance, because there's no way I'm spending 400,000 rands on a Swift. With that money, you can get two brand new Suzuki Swift GAs and go home with 20,000 rands change. Now imagine dropping all that money on one Swift. Oh, man. The H6 Hybrid is a great package, but now the price difference between the H6 Superlux and the Hybrid model is 80,000 rands. That's a bit too much compared to how Toyota is pricing their Hybrid models. Let's use the Corolla Cross 1.8 XR as an example. The price difference between the normal Cross XR and the Hybrid model is just 23,500. Even with the Rev4, the price difference between the normal Rev4 GXR and the Hybrid model is just 39,400. But with Haval, you have to pay 80,000 rands to move from the normal H6 to hybrid. Yes, Haval is offering great feature packed and relatively affordable products compared to the established brands. But the way things are going, it seems like they are prematurely trying to pull a Huawei on us. And it's a very risky move because in South Africa, the ceiling is quite low for underdogs. The H6 launched in 2021 around June. And the four-wheel drive Superlux costed only just 515,000 rands. Now you pay 590,000 rands for the Superlux. That's a 75,000 rands increase in just one year and a few months. I can tell you now, the way things are going, it's only a matter of time before Haval hits the ceiling because South Africans are brand loyalists and they set a mark for underdogs. Once you cross that mark, they blue tick you no matter how good your cars can be. That's why the Hyundai i30N is not getting the support it deserves. Because my fellow South Africans are saying they won't spend 750,000 rands on a Hyundai. Kia gave us the Sorento which is a great car, but South Africans are saying they won't spend 800,000 rands on a Kia. The same thing is going to be said about Haval real soon, if they rush into maximizing profits before building a solid fan base. You can't justify a 75,000 rands price increase in just one year, while our salaries remain the same. Then you blame people when they say they can't spend 600,000 rands on a Haval. Forgetting that when you increase prices, your target market shifts. And the people who can comfortably afford to spend 600,000 rands on a car won't be interested in a Haval. Look, the thing with me is that I analyze cars from an average consumer point of view, not a petrol head perspective, because more often than not, petrol heads don't use common sense. Anything that moves from 0 to 100 in less than 5 seconds is great to them. Even if the car is ugly and comes with a ridiculous price tag. Oh, this one is a beast in Chan. It beast your Gwenza. The one big issue about Chinese cars in general is the concern about fuel consumption. But I don't really believe the H6 is that bad. People are just buying big cars for the wrong reasons and end up complaining about fuel. Yes, Chinese cars tend to have a steep consumption compared to their rivals. But if you buy a big four-wheel drive family SUV for a family of two, and drive it as your daily car to work, what do you expect? 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers? You play too much. From what I've heard from the guys who currently own the Haval H6 is that they average between 8 and 12 liters per 100 kilometers. That's what I expect from a big petrol car like this one. The fuel consumption uproar is borderline propaganda. Ask 2 liter Tiguan and Tiroc drivers what's their average fuel consumption and you will realize that people are just being kind of harsh on the Chinese. Regarding the issue of reliability, so far the guys who own Havals are not complaining about anything and that's a good and a bad thing at the same time. The good part of it is that the cars are proving to be reliable. The downside is that if people are not experiencing issues, we will never know whether the cars are fixable or not. Because you may find that the car is only good if it's not giving you problems and once it breaks, no one can fix it. Reliability is not just limited to a car not giving you problems. 
It also entails the availability of parts and skilled technicians and mechanics around your area. When it comes to the cost of ownership, according to me, there's no need to be spending more than 600,000 rands on an H6 because you can get one for less than that. The sweet spot is the normal H6 luxury four wheel drive and it costs 550,000 rands. If you finance a 550,000 rands car for five years with no deposit and no balloon payment at an interest rate of 9.75%, your installment will be around 11,600. Add, let's say, maybe 2,000 for insurance and your monthly cost goes to 13,600. Fuel wise, you can budget between 3,000 and 4,000 and that will take your total monthly cost of ownership to between 16,600 and 17,600. This is just for the H6 Luxor, not even Super Luxor. Now let's say you don't listen when people try to advise you and you buy the H6 GT. The car will cost you 630,000 rands. And if you finance it for five years with no deposit and no balloon payment at an interest rate of 9.75%, your installment will be around 13,300. Then you add 2,000 for insurance and easily cross the 15,000 rands mark. Again, for petrol, you must budget between 3,000 and 4,000, and that will take your total monthly cost of ownership to between 18,300 and 19,300. For what? Looks and race mood? I'm fine, thanks. Let's now say for some weird reason you think you can beat the system by driving a hybrid. The system is going to beat you because for an H6 hybrid you pay 670,000 rands. Then you sign your life away to West Bank for 5 years with no deposit and no balloon payment at an interest rate of 7.5% and they will take around 14,150 from your salary every month. After paying insurance, your monthly cost goes to 16,150. Since now we are driving a hybrid, you will spend 3,000 or less on fuel. So your total monthly cost will be plus minus 19,000 rands. With 19,000 rands per month, you can get three picantos. One for yourself, one for your main, and one for your side chick. And probably be still left with some change, but I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money. If you are thinking with a budget of 19,000 rands per month, you'd get yourself a BMW. I'm with you, but if you are thinking Golf GTI, you are on your own. Then there's those who are thinking about Propart. Ha, there we are out of order because you can't drive an apartment, but you can sleep in a car. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more car content in Amzansi Context.